Hi everyone, so today I'd like to uh, give you a little walkthrough of one of the newest features we've added to Biome Site, which is the Biome Site distribution feature. So the idea behind this feature is to also give you a view of the Biome Site database. So for our scoring system, we're currently using fixed ranges. So you'll notice that when you log in here, you'll see that you always see, for example, for Commands here that we have an ideal range of 1 to 3%. Now, the biome site range is to give you an indication of how you compare to others. Um, the example I'd like to give you is uh, for Bifida bacteria, for example. Um, if I go to the distribution tab, you'll see that here yeah, we've got um, what all of these points represent. So the X, just this looks show you a tooltip of what all of this means. So starting with the X, that is your own range, your own value. Um, with the lower, which is this point here, which is this is the lowest uh, value seen in the data set. But do um, note that we are excluding the bottom and the top 2%. So why have we ch decided to do that? Um, it, it's purely not to um, let these outliers influence the data set too much because what we're trying to do is show you what a typical microbiome looks like and um, as a result we don't want outliers to skew the data set obviously if you find that your own result um, lies on the outside of these um, then you'll know that yours were your result was actually excluded from the data set um, so Carrying on with the definitions here, so the lower point, we've got um, only a, a relative abundance of 0.0006%. You see that falls within the uh, Warlax red range for a scoring system. Um, and then the bottom 25% only have um, at the, the max point of the bottom 25%, a percentage of 0.05%. So a quarter of people have... 0.05% uh, or less of bifida bacteria and the median which is the midpoint uh, which basically means that half of everyone has uh, bifida bacteria less than 0.365% and half has more than this number um, uh, so that's quite low as you can see this is well at the bottom end of the red range um, this is very useful for people who find that they are in this range. I mean, there's obviously a very big difference between the median and the optimal ranges, as you can see here. Yeah, but this is because um, one of the typical uh, bacteria that tends to decline um, in a state of dysbiosis or because of um, genetic influences is that the bifida bacterium is one of the first to drop and this is a protective bacteria and then if low um, it results um, it, it can end up causing some of these pathobinds to overgrow um, so carrying on with the average this is the easiest one to understand for everyone this is purely um, the average that we take um, all of the results divided by the um, number of results excluding the top um, and bottom 2% and we get the average. So the Q3, this means this is the point at the 75% at the percentile. Um, so you can see in my case, I've, I've got a percentage of 1.847%, which puts me snugly in the top 25% um, of the of, of, of the biome side data set. Um, but still then I'm not in optimal range. But then um, something to note about with if your percentage are quite comfortable it means that you can very very easily feed this up a little bit of a change in diet in fact if you were to measure if you have this sort of range if you were to me measure this day to day today it's very likely that it's going to be within range a week from now or even a day from now it's quite easy for this um, if you're at this level to have it increase however if you are um, a very low ranges around this um, sort of area that it is going to take much more work um, to change that so when you're looking at your results just look at it sort of in context um, and, and try to see what what this is telling you about your overall wealth don't don't fixate too much on your exact percentages so if you if you're looking for um, changes test to test um, if you if you if you can see for example moving between closer to the lower 
to the to the um, 25 percent percentile point that that is that is a noticeable increase um, similarly um, moving from um, the medium into the q3 or, um, and close into the upper ranges obviously that is also a noticeable increase but if you, but, but don't um, read too much into for example an increase between 1.84 4 percent and two percent and similarly a drop because that can happen very quickly um, so yeah, you'll see that um, the, the top upper end of the range um, can be quite high. Something to bear in mind is that bifidobacterium is a lot um, higher in children. Um, as you know, we don't have any filters um, in biome site yet. I mean, what, what we have um, is that when you are comparing a gut sample, we will show you um, comparative data um, for that specific for, for gut samples are only if but if you have for example uploaded a vaginal sample um, or an oral microbiome sample we will compare it with those for example some of you are also sending in ferments um, and that's fine we'll compare with other ferments but I mean we, we don't drill down into for example yogurts versus sauerkraut or whatever um, so I hope that makes sense. Um, I just also want to mention that you can get this from any of these overview um, sections. Um, additionally, it's also available if you go to advanced results detailed view. Um, so the reason we've added it in both places is because people like to see how they, um, obviously how they're doing um, against a scoring system, but they'd also like to see how they compare to the, the data set and, and just to get some context from that. So when you're going into the advanced results section, this again allows you to see beyond what's in um, our scoring section. So an example of this, for example, is um, if you were to go to down to the species level, what you could do is if you want to see uh, what are what about your results um, differ the most um, from the rest, for example. So then you could share, um, sort by percentile rank, either ascending or descending. Um, so we start with descending and you see that I have unusually high uh, bacteroides mesiliensis. I know exactly why this increased to, to this type of level. Um, I will admit I was taking um, Holigos 2FL persistently for many months. Um, I did see my bacteroides increase um, in the test that I was taking over time. Um, but at the time, because my phytobacteria was also increasing to very, very good levels and I was feeling quite good, I didn't an, an initially connect the dots that it was necessarily, I couldn't be sure that it was increasing bacteroides. But in my case, um, after a while, it ended up increasing the bacteroides, but not no longer increasing my bifidobacteria. And obviously, this is pretty bad. So you can see here, yeah, um, <laughs> my level, which is um, in the region, I think it's around 18%, um, is way above even the upper range. Um, so this is one of the dangers of taking prebiotics. If you are taking prebiotics, you have to be very careful um, what, what that's doing, pay attention to your symptoms. Obviously, it's very, very hard to tell based on symptoms because there's so many factors that, 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 um, that impact. So if you are going to be taking quite unusual uh, specialized prebiotics, especially like synthetic prebiotics like 2FL, then I'd suggest that you test more regularly than I was testing every three months. Um, I think it'd be interesting for you if I, if I show you my timeline. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute. But um, but this is an example of how you can see when you definitely now need to take a step back, stop taking that prebiotic. And um, for somebody like my own, I mean, my, my um, gut microbiome is, 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 is more, I mean, yes, I have an, a problem with too high bacteroides um, and too high bilophila. Um, but other than that, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly balanced microbiome. So I just have to go with a more... Uh, vegetarian diet and don't overdo it with artificial synthetic <laughs> probiotics. Um, so what I've what I've been doing um, since this latest test is to basically stop my probiotics. I do take the occasional bi you know, when I feel like my diet hasn't been best. But other than that, I'm trying to get all of my fiber um, through diet alone. 
Um, so the, that was the outline of the top end. Um, you can similarly uh, sort again ascending. Um, in this case, um, I'll choose, um, let's say, um, Bacteroides vulgatus. Um, you'll see my value 0.01%, whereas the average is 5%. I'm in the bottom 2% percentile. Um, so you can see that definitely this is something where there's an area where I deviate from the norm. Why is that? Probably because I have some bacteroides species that is um, a lot higher than most. Um, you can see that when you're looking at my outliers, it's not just Bacteroides mesiliensis, it's also um, a number of other Bacteroides species that is unusually high. Um, so that's that. I just want to quickly show you my mesiliensis. <laughs> um, so yeah, when you are in here, yeah, you can just type in um, You want to look at so I want to compare that. I want to compare that to uh, my bacteroides. Sorry, my bacteroides overall. Yeah. So you can see for for two of these, in fact. These were fairly okay. I was in range, optimal range. Um, for, for, I guess these were these were only two days apart. Um, but then I, yeah, I deviated a bit. Um, I don't I, I don't waste time talking through what led to this. But you can see this very clear trend, and this is when I was taking my two FL religiously. Um, so it's, it, 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 you have to be really careful if you are taking probiotics. Um, that's it. Um, please get in touch if you have any questions. Support at We'd be very happy um, to answer any questions that you have. Thank you for listening.